Hi guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fan Girls, and today is Top 5 Wednesday. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey over at Tinker Reads Lainey, but now she has handed the torch over to Sam on Thoughts on Tombs, and I am so happy about that because I'm subscribed to her channel, and I just adore her, so... I am excited to see where she leads this Top 5 Wednesday group. So, the top topic today is our Top 5 books that handle hard subjects. This can range anything from suicide to mental illness to death to things that you find difficult to sit through. So, mine, I kind of did a little bit of a cheating thing. I just think there are so many great books on hard topics that it was hard for me to narrow it down to my top five. So, instead, I'm doing my top ten. And, unfortunately, the tenth one is a cheat, but I have watched the movie. Movie, and I thought this one was a little too good not to be mentioned on here. So let's get started. So coming in at number 10 for my books that deal with hard topics is My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Picoult. Uh, like I said, I haven't really read this one, but it does cover some pretty heavy topics, like the topic of what's it like to have a family member of cancer, the girl was genetically altered, and only born to save her sister's life. She basically feels like she's only there for body parts and other stuff. So she is fighting to get rights to her own body and ha be legally emancipated from her parents so she could do so. And it just dealt with a very hard topic. Topic. I know I cried like a little baby when I watched this movie. And then I found out it was a book. So I got the book. And I'm already on chapter two of this book, and I just had to mention it on here, mostly because cause it does deal with a lot of hard topics. I mean, we have the topic of having rights to your own body, and is it wrong or is it right to only have a baby to save another child's life. It also has has uh, things about cancer on here too. So very hard topic. And I respect this book for actually going that far. So that's number 10. So coming in at number nine is a book called Identical by Ellen Hawkins. Uh, this one, I can't say what mental illness is dealt with in this because it is a huge spoiler. Spoiler for anyone who hasn't read it. But I can tell you that there is a hard topic of mental illness in here, as well as the topic of molestation in here. So there's a trigger warning for that. And it deals with drugs and alcohol and two teenagers. And it has a little bit of mystery to it, too. I'm not going to give anything away. But I definitely recommend that you read this one because the twist at the ending was just too perfect. And Ellen Hawkins books. I don't think Ellen Hawkins has ever re written a book book that did not deal with a hard topic. So you're going to be seeing a little bit of her books in here. By Danicole is in my ninth place spot. So coming in at number eight is Telling Christina Goodbye by Laureline McDaniel. This is such a throwback because she wrote this in the 90s, I believe. I believe uh, she... I don't know if she's still writing books, actually. I don't really know. I haven't really checked lately, but Telling Christina Goodbye by is about a group of friends that one day get involved in a car crash and one of their friends dies. Dies. So it's basically about dealing with a friend's death 
death and grief and responsibility for who killed her and what goes on after that and how you get through as soon as your best friend dies dies so this book i read it and i cried because it was just emotional and uh yeah okay so coming in at number seven seven <laughs> is uh Baby Alicia is Dying by Laureline McDaniel. This deals with uh, a baby that is HIV positive. Positive, who was born HIV positive. The main girl in here is Desi, and she volunteers to take care of this baby. And this book really shocked me because... She has a type of HIV positive that's not contagious, and yet it really shocked me how ignorant some people were about this subject in the book. How they would avoid the main character because they thought she had it because she was taking care of the baby with it. With it, and how her mother didn't... How the baby's mother didn't want her because she found out that she was HIV positive. It was just a really sad book to deal with and it does have a really sad ending but I'm not gonna give away too much about what that ending is but this book I would definitely recommend and it's really sad and it does deal with a hard topic of a baby act baby being sick and not many people do that so, coming in at number six is Garden of Angels by Laureline McDaniel. Daniel, this one also deals with cancer. Cancer, uh, this one deals with a girl named, I'm trying to remember all their names, named Darcy. Darcy, this is one of my, the books that actually got me into reading. Reading so much, this was the first book I actually picked up. So it also has Nostalgia. For me, because Laura, she was my favorite author, so I picked up a lot of her books. Books, but this one it deals with a girl's mother who gets cancer. Cancer, and it's set in the 1970s when the Vietnam War was also going on. So it does deal with a lot of topics. What's it? And she does have family that's in the war and dealing with her mother's cancer and the th and transferring to, not transferring, but going to a new school all while this is happening. And it's the first book that actually legitimately made me cry. <clears throat> so I gotta give props. So coming in at number five is another book is a book, uh, it says what goes around comes around, but this is two books in one. One, and I've already read one of the stories, and that is Some Girls Are by Courtney Smith. Smith. This one deals with bullying. Bullying, uh, what happens is, uh, this is a plot synopsis, synopsis, by the way, it's not actually spoilers, is a girl, Regina, she's one of the poplars, Poplars goes to a party one night, something happens, and then she is frozen out by her friends, and the girls who claim they were her friends bully her viciously, and it was just a diff really raw take on bullying and how bad it could get, yet sometimes, and it just amazes me, at, amazes me how cruel some people could be, but if you haven't read Some Girls Are by Courtney Summers, I would definitely recommend this. It was amazing. So, coming in at number four, we have Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This deals with the subject of OCD. OCD, and while most people wouldn't call it a hard subject, it was very hard to deal with this book. It deals with loss and OCD and just how it was beautifully written and how I've never really had a care read about a character with OCD, so it was very refreshing for me, and the poetry in here is beautiful, 
and I just adored it. It was, if you read, watched my video about my favorite books of last year, this one was about number three or two. So I definitely would pick this up. Okay, so coming in at number three is throwing me back to my high school years, and that is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Uh, this book deals with a girl who has just come. Well, actually, one moment. This book deals with a guy, and he has sent a bought a package that has thir a recording and thirteen a record. I don't know how to exactly explain it. He sent a package with recordings in them by one of his classmates, Hannah. Hannah committed suicide earlier in the book. Earlier, she's already dead by the beginning of this book. Book. And what's on the tapes is the 13 reasons why she killed herself. And Clay just happens to so be one of those reasons. Reason so we follow him around all night while he tries to figure out what exactly made her fall over the edge. And it was just a beautifully written book that made me really think about what I say to people and how one of my actions could affect them. And it definitely deserves a number three spot. spot. But there was two books that really made me think a lot more. So coming in at number two, it was Crank by Ellen Hawkins. Like I said, Ellen Hawkins deals with a, lo a wide variety of hard topics, and this one covers the topic of drug addiction. Most importantly, it covers meth addiction, and it was really trippy because I, I've heard of meth, I knew a couple people on it, but I never really knew what they went through, and this covers the meth addiction, addiction and what it could do to you, how it could destroy a person's life, and it was just a really eye-opening experience, and this was the first book I read by Ellen Hawkins that made me fall in love with her, so I definitely recommend this book if you're into hard topics such as this one. So last but not least, coming in at number one, is a book I read last year that really made me think that a lot of people would probably wonder why I have it on hard subjects, which I'm going to explain. Explain, And that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here. I picked this book as something that covered a hard subject because it does cover the subject of slavery and cr how cruel people could be. Could be, and it does show what it's like to be a kind soul in a world full of cruelty. Cruelty and just how the cruelty in this book was done was just beautifully written and how some people in a society full of cruelty could still feel compassion for some people. It was just, it was amazing that and there's a pretty good storyline of her brother getting taken and she's were that he might get killed in here. So it does cover a wide variety of hard subjects. Subjects. And it has one of the most cruel villains in here also. It also deals with a lot of violence and death. And death and how some people don't care. It also deals with a mother who is really cruel to her own child child and it was just really sick and gross but I do love this book because it really made me think about what would happen if our society was based off cruelty and it focused on war instead of peace and it was just a real eye-opening experience and I definitely recommend this book and there you guys have it that was my top 10 books that deal with hard topics. What are your favorite books that deal with hard topics? So I will see you guys later, and I hope you have a nice day.